At this point, we have to bring in our guest into the picture, and it's Mogaji Gwega Adejumo, a former investment banker and a chieftain of Afeniferi, the pan-Yoruba socio-political organization. And we'll be focusing on the just-concluded constitution review public hearings, insecurity, state of the economy, and national integration. Welcome to the program, Mogaji Adejumo. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Ruben. Good morning. Well, very quickly, let me ask you. Afeni Ferry has been quoted in the papers today as saying that the uh, constitutional uh, review process that is going on, the public hearings, would at the end of the day amount to an exercise in futility. But there seems to be a general consensus that something has to be done about the 1999 uh, constitution uh, as a way of strengthening uh, Nigeria and the Federation. What is the position of Afeniferi? Why does Afeniferi think that uh, this is an exercise in uh, futility? Uh, because it's an exercise in futility. That's just what it is. It's, um, it's a potios. Um, it's a waste of time. And it's see, so easy uh, for even an aspiring analyst to see through um, the whole shenanigan. Let, let us look at it critically. Um, how much time do we have? between now and 2023 to amend a constitution that um, has been seen uh, to be defective right from 1999. Um, when the uh, present uh, democratic process started in 1999, uh, the Afeni Peri actually came out at that time, yeah, even telling the governors representing Afeni Peri in the AD not to go to Abuja and have anything to do uh, with the federal government until uh, uh, the 1999 constitution is either amended or a new constitution brought in. But again, how do you begin to amend a constitution that is like um, a tire that has suffered like a thousand punctures and uh, you still want to like amend it? Uh, and how much time? Don't forget that the process of even amending a constitution is long and, and very tiresome. Uh, you will still have to, even if you achieve something at the National Assembly level, you will still have to send it to the states. And two thirds of the number of states will have to approve for each and every amendment. Um, I can sit down here with you, it's just that it's gonna take the whole day, and point out a hundred defects about this constitution. So where are we gonna start off from? So say we want to amend this constitution, and we want to do that and have a document to work on and, and to serve this country with its diversity. No, it's not going to happen. It's a waste of time. They just want to buy time. They want to look for the kind of um, candidate cum president that could continue with this defective structure and with this defective uh, and, and uh, very a uh, very obnoxious uh, document called the 1999 Constitution in 2023. That's just what they want to do. And Afanifari is never going to be part of such um, a deceitful uh, uh, exercise, uh, which of course is like a slap on the face of Nigerians. And that lengthy process you just described at the federal and state levels with the um, National Assembly and State House of Assemblies does of course include legislators who will not make any meaningful attempts, probably, to amend the Constitution in a way that affects them, which is another problem with this route that's been taken. So what, to you, is the preferable alternative? Well, let's look at it critically. What we are saying is that this Constitution is skewed. It's, it's all to favor uh, the northern part of this country. And even if you are looking at the legislators, we don't have the numbers in the South. In which case, let's look at the case of Lagos. Even if we accept that Lagos is about 10 million people, which we don't, um, I did a project for the World Bank in year 2000, and um, the World Bank figures for Lagos as at that time was 18 million. But let's take the federal government for what they have said. Look at Kano. Jigawa was taken out of Kano, and between Jigawa and Kano, they have about 80 uh, representatives in the House of Reps, and Lagos has only 20. And if Lagos and the Yoruba are going to ask that we should increase the number of local governments in Lagos 
to have proper representation, which will increase the number of local governments in New York, in land space and, and in number. We, we, we are not going to look at Oyo State, that is like the aggregate of the five uh, 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 southeast states, uh, and believe that we, don't, we shouldn't have more uh, um, representatives than the 32 that we have. In which case, where is the number? Where do we have the numbers to help in amending that constitution? to change the 774 local governments to what should represent the true number of the people in a state like Lagos, in a state like Oyo, in a state like Oshun. We are not going to get the numbers. And that is the truth. So sending anyone back to the National Assembly to effect this change is, is exactly what will not make this constitution to be amendable. And that is why we are saying it is better to have a brand new Constitution, and I will tell you something. Um, we had the uh, uh, Independence Constitution in 1959, but there was a need to include uh, what other ethnicities felt they didn't have in the 1959 Constitution. And what did the then federal government do of our founding fathers? That's another problem. When America is talking, they're always talking about their founding fathers. Do we ever talk about our founding fathers here? It seems as if we've forgotten where we are coming from and charlatans have taken over. But what did the federal government do? In 1963, they took an aggregate of what the people are saying and then they came together, all the regions, and agreed on what to put into the constitution. And that is that benchmark that we have today as the best constitution we've ever had. It's like something ab about what we did in 2014 with the uh, 2014 CONFAB without people actually uh, congregating, but taking the aggregate of what came out of that report and making a brand new constitution out of it. And, and that is better than having to say you want to amend the constitution. Even America, that is 245 years old, uh, they've only been able to amend their constitutions only 18 times in 245 years. One particular amendment of the American Constitution took 18 years to achieve. So how is someone going to convince me, convince the Afeni Ferry, that any such amendment is going to happen with the kind of people we have in Nigeria, with the kind of mindset, with the kind of diversity, with the, with the, with the situation in which we have been so divided, especially by this present government, that nobody trusts anyone. And then, of course, those that the Constitution, the 1999 Constitution favors, will not want to even let go. It's called the dilemma of disengagement. They're not going to allow any such amendment in the first instance. So why would anyone want to go ahead and, and um, partake in something that was designed to fail from day one? Right. I mean, important point you've raised, uh, and, and it's quite shocking, that it is only in Nigeria that people love to live in the desert rather than the coast. You know, when you look at the numbers that come out from certain parts of the country. I mean, because every part of the world, obviously, when you have a coastal area, you have more population than in areas, you know, with less water. But it is only in Nigeria that that phenomenon is different. And it is quite shocking. I want to talk a little bit about the gerrymandering that has gone on over uh, the years in our polity. You know, how can we work at addressing that gerrymandering? Because it has skewed things. There's a big political imbalance, like a big political black hole we all come into based on this gerrymandering you've talked about. And secondly, some people are saying this is a smokescreen uh, to prevent us from the main issue, which is electoral reforms that we should talk about leading up to 2023. Do you share that view? Electoral reforms are important. Uh, the truth of the matter is that many things are wrong with the structure. Everything goes back to a defective structure. Uh, if we want to say the truth to ourselves, there is no confidence in any Nigerian looking at the present way we run elections and the outcomes of any election since um, the dispensation of this present administration started and the INEC that has continues to um, conduct elections that are not credible. We can't say that the elections we've had so far since 2015 have been credible. Some they will, con they will say inconclusive and some will see 
obvious manip manipulations. We, we have seen everything that is wrong in the INEC between 2015 and this year, 2021. And you wonder if someone found the 1983 elections to be bad, and the person has become the president many years after, and he came on the heels of this election of 83 that he said were, were bad, and he is there now, are we not actually going to like, look at the whole thing and conclude that even in his own time that he has come, elections that have been done, uh, at his um, own uh, 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 beat of being in governance, have been even worse than the ones that he, he condemned in 1983. So he, we, we need election reforms. Everybody knows that. But the most important thing is this. If you keep doing the same thing, and what you are getting um, is failure, you are not getting the right uh, uh, results, uh, it simply means that there's something fundamentally, something profoundly wrong if you keep the, doing the same thing and you are getting the same results. Why are we in this present age with technology not doing el electronic voting? Why, why, why are we still doing what we have been doing and we've been getting the bad results? There have been many attempts by the National Assembly, by those who believe that, look, we need electoral reforms, to have electronic voting as part of our voting process. It, 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 that is something that is supposed to be progressive. But what have we had? The presidency have voted against it. What, what exactly does that tell anyone? It tells us that, well, there's no accountability, there's no responsibility, uh, there's hardly anything that is going to be progressive about doing something that for all the time has shown that there's something fundamentally wrong with our electoral system. With, with the way we are going, if we, are, if we continue to do the same thing in 2023, then of course it will simply mean that we haven't learned anything uh, since 1999, perhaps since the past six years. And these are the things that we want to see in a brand new constitution, in which case we don't even need the politics that goes into all of this. By the time it gets to the National Assembly and there's a directive from the presidency that this is a no-go area, and that becomes exactly what we have been saying, that the numbers are skewed against us. If the Southerners actually decide to vote one way today, and the Northerners decide that they're going to vote one way, then of course no bill will be passed. So we have a problem, and it takes us back to the same defective constitution. Well, no well, amendment is ever going to work. Well, the well, best thing for Nigeria at this time, even for the electoral process, well, is to have a brand new constitution well, God, that yeah. is going to be the people's constitution. Mogaji, we need to uh, go on a short commercial break. When we return, we'll try to interrogate some of those points that you have made. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back uh, to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still Mogaji Guiga Adejumo, a former investment banker and a chieftain of Afeni Ferry, the pan Yoruba socio-political organization. Well, Mogaji, thank you for staying with us. You were talking about new constitution, people's constitution. And when people talk about the new constitution, people's constitution, they don't talk about the National Assembly because of the issues you have identified. Now, how do you bring about that new constitution or people's constitution? Considering the fact that the 1999 constitution does not provide for a referendum over Nigeria because the framers of the constitution did not envisage that anybody will bring up issues like restructuring, secession, and all of that. Senator Ike Ukuremado, who is leading, uh, uh, who led the public hearings in the Enugu Center, said that perhaps the real amendment that we need to do is to put a clause about referendum in the Constitution. And how do we do that? How do we arrive at a consensus? What will be your own recommendation? A conference of ethnic nationalities? 
And if it's a conference of ethnic nationalities, who will organize that conference? I'm very glad that you asked this question. Uh, uh, let's go back a little into history, and then I'll come back. Uh, the British realized that, that Nigeria uh, is a peculiar situation in, in which we have um, many ethnicities, uh, um, multi-racial, if you want to put it that way, uh, because there are those of the um, Asian blood, uh, those of the indigenous African blood. But then again, we are multicultural, we are multi-religious. So they, they realized all that. They gave us a constitution in 1946, uh, the Richards Constitution. And we didn't, the, 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 the um, protest that followed the, the 1946 constitution uh, was about the elite. It didn't quite involve those in the provinces. It wasn't provincial. It was mainly about the urban areas. Yet, the British realized that the people do not like this constitution. And what did they do? They, they, they recalled Mr. Richards, who was the governor general. Then they brought someone, McPherson, who gave us the 1951 McPherson constitution. And, and that's exactly where I'm leading to. One in 46, another in 51. But when Chief Awolowo did all that he wanted to do and he succeeded with wanting a truly federal system, they had to go back again, the British, and in 1953, there was the Littleton Constitution, the very first uh, federal constitution, in which case, in, in seven years, we had three constitutions, in 46, in 51, and then in 53. Now, that, that is what you do when you have conviction. That's what you do when you have a bit of common sense. That is what you do when you are committed to, to the nation, and it's about service to others, not service to self. But what do we have? We have today those who are more uh, concerned with about self. All they want to do is self-gratification. They want to continue to do what they, what they are doing, and they're making money out of it, and, and they just don't care about the rest of the people. If we are looking at the economic indices, the growth that each region had from 51, to, to 65. You cannot compare with from 65 to this date. If in, in the old west, up to today, there are still roads built by Chief Obafemi Awolo that are still pliable and people are still using. And if we are going to talk about the glory of the Yorub, of your Yoruba land, you're still going to talk about Awolowo's free education, his free health, the fact that he was able to give us electricity, that's another area that um, the federal government has coveted and is not even allowing others to do. And, and look at the railways. He touched it. He, he built the, the first two skyscrapers. We've not been able to build anyone. Even Lagos State has not been able to build a skyscraper <laughs> since, since then. So if we look at the growth, what really made the Nigeria of then uh, to, to be seen as a potential giant, it was because of the fact that we had the kind of constitution that worked. Now we have this structure and this constitution. And you are asking, how do we now have a brand new constitution? And I'm going to say it takes conviction. And, and if you remember, um, President Obasanjo just set up the Uputa panel. And if you remember very well, that is, I think it's on YouTube, uh, the acting leader of Aferiferi, Paha Ayuade Banjo, represented the Afeniferi, went to put a panel to condemn the 1999 constitution and said it's not workable. He made such a brilliant uh, uh, submission that President Obasanjo was forced to start a, a, a kind of constitutional process that should give us a brand new constitution. But uh, unfortunately, the alleged um, third time thing scuttled that. And if you remember again, it was the same Afeniferi that compelled President Jonathan to finally agree to having the 2014 confab. In which case, situate anything you want to do in what you believe can be done through the presidency. Uh, and that you can't blame anybody for. Uh, the, whatever constitution has come uh, since 1979, I've always been something about the 1979 constitution. In fact, that is the root of all our problems. Those who drafted that constitution put all the powers 
more than 60% of all the powers in the hands of the presidency. In which case, if the president today is ready and willing to have a new constitutional process, he's got the power to do it, just like President Ambassador did. Although, like I said, the third time things scuttled it, just like President um, Yaradu, uh, sorry, President Yaradu didn't touch it, and we know why. And we know why even this president is not touching it. But the fact is, President Jonathan saw through the agitations of the people and put together a 2014 confab. If this government and the National Assembly are even serious at all, they have a working paper already in the 2014 uh, 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 confab report. They can begin to work on that. But what did the president say when he was asked? What he said was he has no time for that paper. And, and that has been the trajectory, the way and, and manner the executive and the, and the legislative arms have treated with disdain the agitations of the people for a new constitution. So place everything on the doorstep of Mr. President. If he wants a new constitution today, he's got the powers and and, and, the, and, and, and he has enough uh, in terms of influence in the National Assembly to, to, to allow a legislation that will make that to work. And, and that is exactly what is wrong with this administration that has, that has restructuring uh, as one of uh, 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 the, the uh, points they listed in their manifesto, but has refused to do anything about it. Yes, indeed. It's, uh, it's just, so it boils down to accountability and the fact that some people just don't feel accountable to those who elected them. You raised the point about the 1979 Constitution, and you'll recall the dissenting voices had their own minority draft report, which I wish had actually carried the majority on the day. This is why we're stuck where we are now. But to play devil's advocate, Afeni Ferre is refusing to participate. You don't want to seem hypocritical because you don't believe in the process. But what would you say to those who will critique that stance that you've taken and liken it to perhaps those who choose not to vote in elections because there's no perfect candidate? A new constitution, unfortunately, is not on the table now as an option. So why not hand in your, the memos with your you know, suggested constitutional amendments and just participate? More there is no have, time. Just about there, one minute. To there go. is no time for that. There, there's not. There's nothing is going to happen by way of an amendment. It's just going to be, like I said, an exercise in which people would say all they will have to say. Um, there is no time to amend. Look, this is nineteen. This is twenty twenty one. Since nineteen ninety nine, that this agitation for something to be done about the constitution uh, have been. Uh, uh, on the front burner of our political discourse. How many amendments have we had? We, if we continue, like I said, if you do the same thing and you are getting the same results and the results are so negative, in fact, you are not even improving, in which case, if we were in primary four, we are now being demoted to primary one, and you still want to go ahead with this same document and, and go to, through another well, election? Well, I got you. Well, if you could just conclude there that uh, sentence, uh, because uh, we seem to have run out of time. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I just hope that um, you'll bring me back another time, because we have a lot more to say about <laughs> this um, matter. Certainly. There's uh, never an end to the conversation about Nigeria and how to make our country uh, better. Thank you very much for joining us this morning.